Hey guys, what's up? We're going to look at stationary wave patterns. But before we begin to look at the patterns that form, let's look at how stationary waves form. They're different to progressive waves because stationary waves have no net transfer of energy and they have these features called nodes and antinodes. And we'll look at those in a little bit of detail. So if you look at diagram number one, this is a rope and it's attached to a tree and it's fixed in the person's hand and it's fixed to the tree in these two positions. A progressive wave is sent out. And it's progressive waves are continually sent out and they're sent out along the rope, as you can see in diagram two. But when the progressive wave hits the tree, it reflects. And these reflected progressive waves interfere with the incoming progressive waves and they interfere. And they create what's known as a stationary wave pattern. So this is a diagram of a stationary wave pattern. So progressive waves are sent out. They reflect and then they interfere with incoming progressive waves and we create this stationary wave pattern. The one I've shown here is called the fundamental, which is the lowest frequency stationary wave pattern that can be formed. But if the person vibrates at a different frequency, you can get different patterns that are set up. What's important to note is that we have nodes and antinodes. Nodes are positions of zero displacement and antinodes are positions of maximum displacement. And this is another way in which stationary waves differ from progressive waves. On a progressive wave, all points experience the same amplitude, but on a stationary wave, nodes do not move, they are fixed, and there is no displacement ever at those points. And at antinodes, that particle, that position on that wave will vibrate with the maximum amplitude. So it goes down and then it goes up with maximum displacement or maximum amplitude. So let's have a look at a few different stationary wave situations and the patterns that result at different frequencies. So this, we're going to look first of all at the waves on a string. So this is a string and it's fixed at both ends, such as on a guitar, where it's fixed at the top and the bottom of a guitar. The most lowest or most basic, the most fundamental um, stationary wave pattern that can be formed is called the fundamental pattern. And that's the first one. It's the lowest frequency. So this is the fundamental, but it's also called the first harmonic. Some important things to notice on here, that because it's fixed at both ends, you always get a node and a node at the fixed ends. And in the middle, you have an anti-node. The frequency of this I'm gonna call F naught. That just means the original, the starting frequency, the fundamental frequency. The length of this string is given by the length L. And you can see here, we've only got half a wavelength. A node to a node is half a wavelength, and that's equal to L. So we can say that lambda, the wavelength, is equal to two times the length. So if the length of the string was 50 centimeters, the wavelength would be 100 centimeters. If we oscillated the string at a higher frequency, eventually at the just the right frequency, we'll get what's known as the second harmonic. So this is the next stationary wave pattern that can be formed. And in this case, we've just simply added one extra node in. You'll notice that the wavelength has decreased Therefore, the frequency must have increased. And because the wavelength is halved, the frequency must have doubled. So we can say that the frequency is two times the fundamental frequency. We've got a node to a node to a node. So we've got a complete wavelength. And you should be able to see that on the diagram. So we can say that the wavelength of this second harmonic is equal to L. If we increase the frequency further, we will eventually get the third harmonic. And the frequency of this is three times the fundamental frequency F naught. In this case, we've actually got three over two wavelengths. We've got one and a half wavelengths equal to L. So the wavelength is equal to two thirds of the length of the string. Finally, and we can keep on doing this, but we'll just go to the fourth harmonic. The fourth harmonic has got an even smaller wavelength and a higher frequency, and it's four times the fundamental frequency. And we've actually got here, as you can see in the diagram, one complete wavelength, two complete wavelengths. So two lambda is equal to L. It's really important to note here that each time we go up a harmonic, we're adding an extra node in. So we had two nodes, then we had three, then four, then five. And the frequency is increasing and the wavelength is actually getting smaller each time. And I can send the last one, lambda is L over two. That was waves on a string where it's fixed at both ends. But a situation that often comes up is that if you've got waves in a pipe 
So you may have a speaker at one end of the pipe and it's fixed and it's creating sound and the waves are bouncing off the other end here and you get a station wave pattern. And these patterns are actually identical to the patterns that we see when we've got a string fixed at both ends. So the, the lowest frequency one is called the fundamental. So that's the simplest station wave pattern that can be formed. And we also can call that the first harmonic. And I'll go through this one quickly. The frequency is F naught. We have half a wavelength. So lambda over two is equal to L. So lambda is equal to two L. The second one is the second harmonic. And it's got twice the frequency. So we can say that we've got a wavelength here is equal to L because we've got one complete wavelength in this pattern. The next standing wave pattern is called the third harmonic. And we have three times the fundamental. And in this case, it's three over two lambda is equal to L. So lambda is two thirds of the length of that um, column. And the fourth harmonic is four times the fundamental frequency. And we've got here two complete wavelengths is equal to L, the length of that pipe. And so we can say that lambda is L over two. So these are exactly the same as the waves on a string. It's just that these are waves within a pipe that's closed at both ends. And when a pipe is closed at both ends, you have to have nodes at those fixed ends and an antinode in different places, in this case, in the fundamental in the middle. We've got a different situation now. So this is a wave in a pipe where one end is open. And this is the these are the standing waves that actually form that if you have a, a bottle of pop and you blow over the top of it, you can sometimes hear a, a musical note being made. That's a standing wave in which one end of the um, bottle is open and the other end is fixed at the bottom where the water is. So these are the standing wave patterns you see in that situation. As always, the most basic standing wave pattern that can form is called the fundamental. And we'll call that the first harmonic as we have done before. We always call this F naught for the fundamental frequency. And now we need to consider wave, the wavelength. At the closed end, we always have a node, but this time this differs because one end is open and we always get an anti-node at the open end. We've got a node to an anti-node, which is lambda over four is equal to L. So the wavelength is equal to four L. It's really important to note that we always get an antinode at this open end and a node at this closed end. If we increase the frequency, we actually don't get the second harmonic. We now turn to what's called the third harmonic. And the reason for this is that the frequency is increased by a factor of three. We have three F naught because we've got three quarters of a wavelength is equal to L. Therefore, we can say that the wavelength is equal to four over three times the length of the tube. We can increase the frequency further and we get the, the next odd harmonic. So we get the, the fifth harmonic because we've increased the frequency by a factor of five. We've got five quarter wavelengths. We've got one quarter, two quarters, three, four, five times the original quarter wavelength. So we've got five F times the fundamental frequency. So we can say here five quarters of a wavelength is equal to L. So lambda is equal to four fifths of L. And as you can see the pattern we've gone from the first, third, fifth, we now go to the seventh harmonic. The reason for that is we have seven quarters of a wavelength. So this is seven times F naught. So seven over four lambda is equal to L. So the wavelength is four over seven times L. Really important, and I'm gonna emphasize it once again, that you always have a node at the closed end and you have an anti-node at the open end. When you have one end open, you only ever get the odd harmonic. So it goes the first, third, fifth, seventh, and then you go to the ninth and the 11th harmonic. This last one is waves in open pipes. And you see these in, in musical instruments called boom whackers, which are little kids toys, which when you hit them on something, it creates vibrations and you get standing wave patterns. And at both ends, it's open. So in this case, you always have an anti-node at the open end. And in this case here in the fundamental, we've got a node in the middle. 
So this is the simplest wave, and we always call that, as we've seen, the fundamental. And we know the other name for that is the first harmonic. We always say the fundamental has a frequency f naught, And in this case, the wavelength, we've got half a wavelength here. So lambda over 2 is equal to L. So lambda is equal to 2L. The wavelength is twice the length of the, the column of the tube. Next up, we have what's called the second harmonic. And that's because the frequency is 2F0. You should be able to see here, we've got one complete wavelength. So lambda is equal to the length of the tube. The next harmonic is known as the third. So it's three times the fundamental frequency. And we can say that we've got three halves of a wavelength. We've got one and a half wavelengths equal to L. Therefore, the wavelength is two thirds of the length of the pipe. Finally, we get the fourth harmonic. And we have four F naught. And therefore, we can say that we've got two wavelength, or what we've got um, four over two lambda or just two lambda is equal to L. So um, the wavelength is equal to two over four L, which is just half of the length of the tube. So this, when we've got waves in open pipes, the at both ends open, you have antinodes at both ends each time. And we go back through the harmonics, the first, second, third, and fourth, just like we had when both ends were fixed and when we had a string. But the standard wave patterns are different because we get the anti-nodes at the open ends instead of the nodes at the fixed closed ends. So in summary, you just need to practice drawing all the different diagrams that we have. We have waves on a rope and you must remember you have nodes at the fixed ends. You have waves on a pipe where it's two ends closed. And again, they're exactly the same as the waves on a rope because you get nodes at both ends. When you have waves in a pipe where one end is open and one end is closed, at the closed end you have a node and an anti-node at the open end. And where you have both ends open on a pipe, you always have to have an anti-node and an anti-node. The ones which are the most tricky are these ones here, when you've got one end open. And that's because it follows the first, third, fifth, and seventh harmonic, harmonic, harmonics. That's it. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.